Okay, we're back here in Las Vegas. This is HP Discover. We're winding down day three. We're getting ready to wrap this up, but towards the end of the day, we still got some more action here. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle, exclusive coverage, HP Discover. I'm John Furrier, joined with my co-host Dave Vellante and Sean Darty, Vice President of Business Development of Enterprise DB, collecting trophies um, here uh, at HP Discover. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So, first of all, tell us uh, why you're here and the, the awards you guys have won. Sure. So. Um, Enterprise DB and HP have been uh, partners for several years now, and uh, we, we provide, uh, we're the enterprise PostgreSQL company, so we provide a certified supported database distribution based on Postgres. And yesterday, um, HP awarded us the Alliance One Partner of the Year for Mission Critical Computing Category. So Postgres has obviously been around for a while, and still very popular. Um, certainly not anywhere close to being uh, you know, on the downward trend, although other databases have, and uh, we've done so many CUBE interviews over the past couple of years, it's our fourth season. Uh, my favorite soundbite around the database world was it's, it's now really trendy to be a database guy. You go back five years ago, ah, you're a database, now it's like the hottest thing. Data science, databases are now really killer because with big data, you can store it on a variety of different formats, Postgres, HBase, DynamoDB, you name it, there's a lot out there. Right, right. Um, and some are, are, are rising, some are falling, but at the end of the day, um, the world's going software, so the database layer is, in essence, you know, pick your tool, pick your platform, right? So so with that all going on, how do you guys see that your place in the market there? So we've really seen, um, uh, kind of a renaissance for PostgreSQL over the last year. It's really the only open source relational database option for the enterprise. Um, you know, there, people will say, well, there's MySQL, but MySQL wasn't really built to, um, to replace Oracle or replace DB2 or Sybase. It's more of a kind of a web presentation, um, read mostly, read only database. And so um, with the three legs of the uh, infrastructure software stool, you've got operating system, middleware, and database. We've already seen two of those three fall from expensive proprietary solutions to open source. And so now that the same phenomenon is happening with uh, with database. So you saw the, the Unix to Linux move, you saw the WebSphere and WebLogic to JBoss and Tomcat move, and now you're seeing, um, you know, with Skype is all on Postgres, Instagram, um, our, we have large companies like Korea Telcom moving from Oracle to uh, to Postgres, so um, the momentum is really gaining. So why are they moving? Help us understand that a little bit better. Well, the the move is really twofold. One, um, companies don't want lock-in. Um, they, they want flexibility and choice. And so when you're locked in, and especially when you're locked in for you know really high dollars, imagine Oracle's list price is forty-seven thousand dollars a core plus twenty-two percent maintenance. Um, so the second thing is in cost savings. So the, the value proposition for us is offering an enterprise class database for about 80 or 90% cost savings. The similar cost savings customers we're seeing moving from Unix to Linux. The performance is as good, but you have more money to either spend on things that help your business grow or put it to the bottom line. So I understand, Sean, you can, if you really negotiate hard, you can get that 22% down to 21%. That's right, and, that's, right. Uh, that's so. right. Well, you know, it costs a lot to fund a Hawaiian island and a, you know, a Iron Man franchise and yachts, so. You know. <laughs> Thank you for doing your part. Um, so, all kidding aside, so tell, tell us more about Postgres, because a lot of people might not know. So it's an object relational database management right. system, right? So talk a little bit more about its roots, and how it's evolved, it's acid compliant, with all the things that people, or Oracle's world love, but maybe just give us a sort of background on So the, the history of PostgreSQL dates back to um, the late 70s. Uh, Michael Stonebreaker, who created Ingress, also created Postgres out of uh, UC Berkeley. So and, Postgres and Vertica is, founder. Yes, uh, yeah. and so um, that's Post Ingress is where the name Postgres comes from. And um, actually it was born from the same uh, IBM white paper that Oracle originally <coughs> used to create their database. So you have a lot of um, kind of inherent similarities. It's as you mentioned, it's an old it's an old project, and it's a very mature and um, I wouldn't say cutting edge. Um, it's a unlike some open source projects where if you're using the open source version, you're risking a lot of uh, you know potential around support or crashes or what have you. The open source community with Postgres is um, they're very. Um, they're very conscious of making sure that it's something that enterprises can use right out of the box. And then what we do is we add on top of that for our enterprise class customers. And, it's, and it has many of SQL's attributes or standards that have been yeah. adopted over time. 
Is that, is that That's correct? right. Multi-version concurrency control, and um, as you mentioned, HACCP compliance. So it, um, you know, it's really built to. I'll give you an example. So Korea Telecom, as I mentioned earlier, they were. They were on um, Oracle, and they uh, they were rewriting their um, mobile phone pre-order system, and uh, so they moved to a new set of DL 380s from HP, and moved from Oracle to Advanced Server in time for their iPhone 5 pre-order, and um, in fact took um, you know over 30,000 processes in the first 60 seconds of that being live with you know not not a single issue. So. Um, the fact that it's inexpensive is one thing, but it still has to work. Otherwise, um, otherwise, no one cares what it costs. So, what do you actually? So, talk about the business model a little bit. So, it's open source project. So, you build uh, tools on top of that, presumably, right? Uh, and, and and services. Well, what we do is we we integrate additional features into PostgreSQL in four main buckets. We add um, performance enhancing features. We add um, additional security. We add um, management tools, and then we also add Oracle database compatibility. So um, with, with uh, Postgres Plus Advanced Server, our, our flagship product, you get things like partitioning included, you get XDB replication server, you get uh, Postgres Enterprise Manager, and then you also get the Oracle compatibility technology. So we've actually built PL SQL syntax into the database along with most of the stored procedures and functions and triggers you would take advantage of when you're writing your application to Oracle. Okay, so the main competitor is Oracle, right? Your, your customers are coming from Oracle. Yeah, they have, you know, they have half the database market. So, you know, the, the, um, that market's about $30 billion. They have about 47% of it. It's growing about 9% a year. So, you know, they're, their customers are keeping us busy. It's funny that the so uh, a lot of us at Enterprise DB are from Red Hat, and we remember the Solaris to Linux uh, migration. And the the difference then was, even though the cost savings was so big and the performance was so good on Linux, people liked Sun. Sun customers were were loyal and happy, but they had to move anyway. Well, we don't really find that same phenomenon now, you know. So, so um, we're getting a lot of both both the. PostgreSQL users that are doing more with the database and Oracle users that yeah, just can't I mean, believe you're, how much you're getting spending. a lot of new blood in there. Obviously, Postgres has got a really big following. You talked to a lot of the alpha geeks in the database world. Postgres is the preferred solution for a variety of reasons. But what's interesting, and you, you might not know this, is that uh, so Silicon and the Wikibon have been really focusing on the hyperscale market, which was called WebScale, Facebook, Twitter, Zing. These guys build their own stuff. And right. You mentioned some of the clients you have. You know what I'm talking about. So those guys have built their own open source scale out has been the theme. So we love scale out open source. That's a direct contrast to Oracle. Scale up commercial software. Right, right. So pay, uh, general purpose computing, general purpose software, a la license. And even HP's talking more open multi-vendor, open stack. So you got on one end of the spectrum, Oracle, scale up, right. gear, commercial, pay for the software. And then the guys like Facebook and these guys who build their own open source software contribute it back and put on commodity gear. Right. There's this big fat part in the middle. That's kind of where Moonshot goes to, it's where HP's sitting. And so that's your opportunity. Did I get that right? That is right. So so we have builds for, um, for instance, specifically with HP for not only their x86 server line for Windows and Linux, but also HP UX on Itanium. So, you know, particularly outside the United States, there are still a lot of large enterprises that um, that have invested a lot of money in their superdomes, and they are going to continue to invest money in their in their superdomes. And so we we give them the ability to have a database solution that can be on their blades, on their low end servers, all the way up all the way up to their um, their their big boxes. So we can scale up or scale out. And in fact, we have sharding that will be coming into. Um, Postgres Plus 9.3 in uh, later this year, so you can shard your database for for um, yeah. really great performance and scalability. John loves to talk. I love this line, John. You said, hey, you know, ten years ago, five years ago, you go to a cocktail party. What do you do? Oh, I'm in the database business. Oh, yeah, we'll see it. <laughs> it was just kind of a boring, you know, market. All of a sudden, it's you know, just taken off. And a lot of that is, of course, the NoSQL action that's going on. So, yeah. what do you see as uh, <laughs> sort of what's going on in the database market? You gave us some growth stats. I presume that includes maintenance. Well, his cocktail uh, parties, they all like, oh yeah, yeah, come on in, you're a database guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now it's like, right. now it's That's like, really cool. So what, what do you see as the big, you know, sort of gestalt trends that are going on in, in database, and how are you guys capitalizing on So, you know, what we see is, um, and, and NoSQL is a, it's got an important place to play in the database world, but, but right now, we kind of consider it the big, shiny red button syndrome. So, the, um, 
companies don't exactly don't push it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> companies don't know exactly what to do with yeah. it. And, and I talked earlier about um, about MySQL being more for read only or read mostly. And um, so imagine you're on Amazon.com and you're looking for a book, and you um, you find the book, you read a review, you read another review, you you it tells you it recommends another book to you. You go to that page. All of those pages, all of that work being done by the database is perfect for MySQL and it's also perfect for NoSQL databases. But the minute you hit check out and you want to actually send your credit card information over the web and then that transaction has to go to the bank and then they have to, as quickly as possible, make a determination on whether they're going to allow you to make that purchase or not, you're going to use an OLTP database for that. You're going to use Oracle or PostgreSQL or DB2 or Sybase. You're not, you're not going to use something that isn't asset compliant because it's money. And the, you know, when we talk about mission critical, there's two things that are mission critical, really, our health and our pocketbooks. And so when it comes to uh, database, you want to make sure that, um, that you've got the security and reliability that you need around particularly those two things. So Sean, what more can you tell us about the company? Um, you know, any stats, any you know, progress you're making? Sure, uh, sure. Gross margins, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, just share with us some of the, the key Yeah, I'll give you highlights. a little information. So we've been around for, um, for about eight years now. We've got over 2,000 customers around the world. Um, we grew 62% revenue uh, in 2012. We're looking to do at least that for 2013. We, uh, we are on a subscription model for our uh, product, Postgres Plus Advanced Server, which, so imagine, you got 47 grand a, a core on one side plus maintenance, and you've got $5,000 a socket per year on, on this hand, um, and that includes the license to use along with support, maintenance, upgrades, updates, et cetera. So, and of course, we also offer Follow the Sun support. We also offer training services and consulting services, both. Oh, and what's that count? Pardon me? Headcount? We have 135 employees around the world and we partner very, very uh, closely with um, our big brothers like uh, like HP. In fact, um, HP in many countries, you can now purchase your Postgres Plus Advanced server from HP and in fact also get um, support from HP as well. It's nice that you have that HP relation because they're obviously enterprise cloud, value cloud, and like public cloud, commodity cloud, some call it. Um, so I got to ask you, Dave and I love I uh, love to talk and we do research specifically with CIOs and the enterprise and obviously we also cover Cloudera, Hortonworks, those guys in the big data space, HPs and, and in the Hadoop market and you know, it's obviously a lot of buzz on that uh, uh, for, for a lot of reasons. But um, it's early. So when we talk to customers, big banks and big enterprises, right. insurance companies, you know, they got a billion dollar operating budget. We ask them about Hadoop and, and these things and they go, great, we love it, we got some POCs going on, and this, but they're scratching their heads. They have to put a, a square peg in a round hole to kind of make things work. Little things, ANSI compatibility. I got Red Hat over here, I got a NetApp filer, I got some EMC, I got some HP servers, I got Open View Network, all this stuff. They're multi-vendors, so this legacy, right? Right. What can you share with us about what you guys are doing and, and some of the things that are check boxes, minimum, minimum features to have or table stakes as you go in and want to do big data right. in the enterprise? What have you guys found? So, so what we do with big data is we partner. So, for instance, um, you know, we stick with, you know, the very, um, what, I, what I would say, uh, unsexy kind of your typical relational database management services. But what we do is with Postgres Plus Advanced Server, for instance, we have a Hadoop connector so that you can connect your Postgres Plus Advanced Server database to a Hadoop data repository and query from that data that's in Hadoop. When it comes to cloud, we have a, um, a product offering called Postgres Plus Cloud Database that we launched in January of 2012. Um, that's available on HP Cloud Services, it's available on um, AWS, and it's also available, um, there's a cloud stack build also for Citrix. And with our Postgres Plus Cloud Database, you have a cluster manager console that automates virtually all of the DBA tasks. So you have auto scaling of read nodes based on, um, on uh, customer parameters that they set. You have auto scaling of storage. You have the ability with one click to add or subtract nodes, upgrade your database. And the real benefit is you can either spin up database clusters of open source PostgreSQL or our product, Postgres Plus Advanced Server. And the real difference between ours and whatever else you would spin up in the, as a database in the cloud like Amazon RDS is we didn't change any of the database code. All of the 
all of the value in and how we do the orchestration is in the cluster manager console. So you can literally take an application that's using um, PostgreSQL in your physical data center and simply point the load balancer to the cloud database version of that and you have no changes needed to the application because it's the exact same database code. Are you the, uh, are you available or contemplating being available on, on Amazon? You We're on Amazon. You are on yeah, Amazon. yeah, okay, yeah. Great. So, right, so we use Amazon um, as uh, kind of a dev and test, and then we uh, we help customers that want to be in production as well. Um, sometimes on Amazon, sometimes on cloud stack. So that's a that's an Amazon offering. Right? Yes. Like swipe the credit card. Yes. Get your. That's right. Uh, and you would offer. get billed. You would get billed right through your Amazon account. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, no doubt. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a total they're good at free. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're good in a good way. That. In yeah. a good way. And, uh, and then we'll have a bare metal build this year as well, um, so that we can really um, help customers that want uh, a private cloud solution. Are you on uh, or planning to be on HP's public cloud? As we're well? on HP Cloud Services now. Okay, yes, great. It's in beta right now, and we're working with them around their um, their OpenStack framework to get go from beta to GA. Any, so any others that you can talk about that you're, you're on? Currently? Yeah, we also, um, through CloudStack, which is Citrix's open yep. source cloud framework, uh, we we signed uh, a partnership deal with Contigix. So they're a, uh, a hosting company that based out of St. Louis that also um, now does cloud hosting. And so uh, we'll be GA, GA on uh, Contigix very soon as well as their, basically as their relational database service. Awesome. All right, Sean. Well, listen, thanks for stopping by theCUBE and uh, enlightening us on what's happening in database land and really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Okay, uh, this is theCUBE, Enterprise DB here inside theCUBE. Big uh, award from HP. Um, uh, congratulations. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.